Hey guys, welcome to another G Auto Repair YouTube video. And today we'll be working on a 2010 Kia Soul with the check engine light on and the transmission seems to be shift, shifting pretty hard or, or violently, especially when going from, uh, from park to reverse. And when you're driving down the road, certain shifts does it kind of violently at times. So that was the original complaint of this uh, vehicle. So I have already checked the codes. I'm gonna check it again here so you guys can see. And uh, give it a minute to think. So we have a list of codes. These I'm going to ignore. I'm not gonna worry about these history codes. The one that I wanna concentrate is this very first one here, this P0713. Transmission fluid temperature sensor A, circuit input high. That's the one that I want to concentrate on. Um, these were sent because I unplugged the transmission connector to, to make sure that I'm getting the right uh, voltage and stuff like that to do a couple tests. So that's why um, these codes set so what we have here is let's go ahead and back out go to live data we're going to look at the oil temperature sensor reading uh, and it is where where it here it is number six okay so here we have oil temperature sensor reading and it's fixed at 176 the car is practically cold all I did was just turn it on, moved it here into the work area. Um, I, dro I drove it around the block real, real quick, but it's it's cold, but it's saying that is 176. Now that is a preset or a default setting. When the computer detects a problem with that sensor, it will automatically input this um, reading and uh, set the code. So no matter what temperature the transmission is on, it's always going to read this. And it uses the temperature sensor reading to, um, to I guess, adjust pressure in the transmission for operational purposes. So that is why I'm thinking that I'm having some uh, harsh shifts is because the sensor is not working. The computer has detected that, so it just automatically... Uh, defaults to a certain setting and obviously you feel it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna replace this sensor and that's what this video is about replacing the sensor um, again 2010 Kia Soul 111 well, almost 112,000 miles on it so uh, the sensor was a little bit of a challenge to come by uh, I'll get into that here shortly let me set up my workstation and then uh, I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys. Um, so I got the vehicle on the lift. Um, there's a couple things I'm going to be doing up here to get access to the connector, which is below all this good stuff here. Um, so with that said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these, uh, these covers. Uh, not covers, but... Uh, uh, the intake and uh, and this breather here so I'm gonna actually take it off from back here yeah. Let's see what I can do with this little screwdriver yeah uh, it's working just to get it out of the way and uh, I mentioned earlier that it was a bit difficult to get that sensor because I called the dealer and uh, called my local dealer here, which was, um, and I'm going to use this moment to kind of, hold on.
I'm going to use this moment to kind of vent on uh, the service of Miami Lakes Auto Mall, at least the Kia division. Their unprofessionalism in not picking up the phones or getting back with me. That was a week long ordeal. Uh, I think that that is unacceptable that you can't pick up the phone on your customers when they need something from you. So, yeah, I'm not too happy with them right now. Um, so, I ended up having to go. To Hollywood Kia who resolved the issue relatively quickly so my thanks to them over at Hollywood Kia parts department um, I called them up and uh, they couldn't get the part number right off the bat I guess um, there was a little bit of confusion in the catalog or something so they had to get with uh, Korea or something like that to get the right part number uh, so we finally got the part number and uh, and they shipped it uh, and they gave it got it in my hands relatively quick you know, it took a couple days but all that worked out wonderfully there's a hidden bolt down here um, way down in here so that's why well, that's what made this uh, finding this part a bit of a challenge so, again, thanks to Hollywood Kia for helping me locate this. And as far as Miami Lakes Auto Mall is concerned, uh, you guys suck. Sorry, but that's how I feel about it. <laughs> so anyways, this is the part number here. Let me make sure that you guys could see this. Um, and the temperature sensor is built into this harness. You may think, oh, wait a minute, this is a harness. You're right, it is a harness but the temperature sensor is built into it. Now, I'm hoping this is the right part. I haven't opened it yet, so I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what I'm gonna run into. I've never done this before, but the, the connector is right down there. If you guys can see, is this one. So I disconnected that the first time the car was here, and that's how we ended up with all those um, history codes for the torque converter and all that good stuff. Um, so that's why I'm not worried about it. But what I wanted to do as a confirmation um, was disconnect it and connect the actual and connect the actual um, harness and see if at least that um, I'm gonna have all those other crazy codes, but at least if I can get the um, the what you will call it the. Uh, temperature sensor code to read correctly that's just a quick little test that we can do just to make sure we're on the right path without disassembling anything I hope this works let's see there we go there we go you gotta push in that little brown tab there or a gray tab I should say see if I can give you guys a better look here that little gray tab you got to push it in and then the little tab there you got to push it down to pull the connector out so now that that is disconnected all I'm gonna do is let me see if I can put this flashlight here in a way that I can work with both hands I'm just gonna connect it just like so, boom, it's connected. And see if, see if that temp sensor starts working. See if that temp sensor starts working. And I'm gonna give you guys a, a closer look of that here shortly. So we're gonna go to live data. And we're gonna go to oil sensor. And voila, we're now at 86. Let me turn off my headlight here and get a closer look so you guys can see. You guys can see the reading now. It was 176, 
now is at 86 so just like that i confirmed that this is in fact my problem my temperature sensor now is working if i were to go to trouble codes um it might go to change from current to history but all the other all the other codes that were there is going to go from history to current that's what i'm suspecting is going to happen yes exactly that's exactly what happened now this is in the history as a history code and all these went active i'm expecting that to happen because i disconnected the harness so uh the sensor is reading because the sensor is built into the harness and i will show you that here shortly let me turn off the car let me turn off the car okay and i'm going to disconnect let me turn on my headlight first okay so i don't know if you guys can see this i don't know if i have a good angle there but you got to push this brown this gray little tab here you may need a pocket screwdriver to do it and then you got the little black tab behind that and it just pops right on out okay so i'm gonna pull this out again this is the part number right here and what we have here is a connector and you can see that let me make sure okay the sensor here is built into the connector uh, in my opinion this is kind of silly there's that part number once again just in case okay this is kind of silly in my opinion because I'm sure they could have easily made a sensor that just plugs in and out of the transmission casing somewhere or something to that effect. I'm not sure. Um, the parts, uh, the parts associate that uh, that took care of me even said it that they only used this design for a couple of years, um, and uh, they did away with it probably for that reason. I don't know, but it's uh it's a bit of a doozy so um what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna raise the car and uh start taking off both pans and draining the oil and all that good jazz so hang on tight i'm not gonna have you sit here and wait for this thing to go all the way up so i'll get back with you when i'm ready to start working all right so we're back here we're uh, we're uh, going to drain the transmission. Let me see if I can get you guys a better look here um, of what's going on. Uh, what we have here is a 17 millimeter drain bolt or drain plug that uh, Kia was nice enough to give us. A lot of uh, manufacturers are not giving that giving that to the technicians anymore which makes a big mess um i hope you guys can see this so we're just gonna loosen remove it that bad boy is on there okay ah, oof, that's not good all right let's let me just hit it with the let's see if i can hit it with the Hey, real quick. I don't wanna. That bad boy is. Ooh. That bad boy was on there. There you go. Nice. And uh, I'm just gonna pour all this fluid in here. Uh, the fluid doesn't look all too bad. I am pouring it in a clean container and I'm pouring it into a clean container just in case it really doesn't look too bad it looks like uh, they may have serviced it not too long ago um, I see here it's got some RTV with this gasket or something so I'm not sure what all happened there, but I'm gonna be using fresh fluid. But 
in these older transmissions I like to keep the old fluid in in a separate container just in case it gives me issue I can put some of this back and hopefully that might alleviate the problem with these transmissions nowadays you just never know um, it kind of goes back to what we've talked about before about uh, these service intervals going so far or being stretched so far that uh, by the time you do get to it the damage has already been done so that's what that is about so I'm just gonna tighten this probably not as tight as it was but still and we're just gonna let me see if I can do I have to remove any of this okay now we have a good view of the entire pan uh, let me let me start by loosening this and we're gonna remove all of these all these all the way around to loosen it so all I'm doing is just striking with the rubber mallet just to break it free again it looks like they applied some some RTV to this so it may not it may not come that easy the rubber mallet should not damage the pan you could see how it's changing the sound of it already so it's starting to break free all right so now I'm going to completely remove this one and let me since I know there's some that's gonna come out let me start with this corner here get the pry bar that's what we got tools for and just gently Ooh, there we go see there you have it that's what we want to be careful please. if you didn't expect that and all of a sudden all that fell on you you're not gonna be a happy person okay I hope you guys got a good view of me taking that off if not then I may just cut that part out and get straight to this one um, but all we did was just remove all the bolts all the way around we left two on there they're loose but they were on there that way we hit hit it with a rubber mallet that won't damage the pan and it'll break loose the the pan from the from the transmission so as we can see here here is our temperature sensor with the connector here's our oil filter which we already have a new one we're gonna replace it now that we're here and uh, let's see what else we got and uh, that's about it we got this part here so we unhook this and then we gotta remove it from up here so the valve body has to come down we do have to remove the valve body so in order to do that uh, yeah we have to drop the valve body in order to get to that uh, to remove the harness from from the casing up there so let me do a few things and I'll get right back with you guys okay so um, I removed the the oil filter which is this right here it's just three little bolts and it just comes right off um, there will be oil coming out of here so be careful when you do that and after analyzing this um, it appears that I have to remove all these little 10 millimeters that are in the edges all the way around I think there's four here four here and uh, all the way around and I gotta disconnect the harness here and I have to loosen this nut because this is a shaft that goes to the shifter so I'm gonna have to loosen this remove it 
and uh, obviously I got to do that first and loosen this first and then I get with the 10 millimeters and I got to be careful with the 10 millimeters because I'm working on transmissions before normally they're different lengths I'm not sure like I said I haven't done this job before so this is a first for me um, but uh, based on experience I know that there may be different lengths in uh, in, in 10 millimeter screws so I gotta make sure those go back on the right um, the right sequence there where they belong and on top of that I gotta be careful when lowering this again I don't know how much of this is gonna show on the video so I may have to you know do some editing afterwards um, there may be other things that are loose or whatnot so I gotta be careful when I'm bringing it down so I gotta be paying more attention to what I'm doing than on the camera so I do apologize for that if if a lot of this footage doesn't come up so all right so let's get started I'm gonna start by just disconnecting this and here's my sensor this is what we're gonna be replacing uh, there we go just like that comes right on out here's the the sensor right there of this is showing up so I do apologize this is probably gonna be a 14 millimeter yes it is there we go so I just cracked that loose I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it and drop it Make sure it doesn't fall in here there we go so it should only go one way just like that so I gotta be careful not to lose these parts and this looks like a little spool valve slides in and out I'm not gonna fool with it too much I don't know if there's like a little spring or something in there so I want to be extra careful especially since I have I haven't done this before all right so now that we got that and that now we're gonna you know what I'm gonna do let me get these little little cups I thought I had another one what does it do? I got these for a reason so let's put them to work uh. so what we have here is the valve body so I see we have an o-ring here we have these springs here and here and as you can see they can actually move so we have to be extra careful and they too have seals back away they too have seals so I gotta be careful with this stuff I gotta be super careful with this stuff. I can't lose anything. Um, these three here appear to be the same. Uh, these three here appear to be the same. This one is different because of the color of the spring. And there's actually another spring inside of it, also colored green and uh, these look the same but this one in the middle has another spring they all the, appear to be the same color they appear to be the same but this one has an extra spring inside from what i can tell so you gotta keep that in mind um so this is another harness that comes down for the solenoids um i only got the one Maybe this is what the guy was talking about, that there's two and he wasn't sure which one. Um, at this case, hindsight 50-50, I would have rather just changed them all that were here. But, and obviously if I knew about all these little 
gaskets and seals and stuff um, so yeah it just it just looks like a like an o-ring there uh, let me check see if there's anything stuck in the transmission another seal or something yes there's another hold on. there is another seal that is here okay it appears to be in there and here okay they seem to be in good working order uh, nothing crazy and obviously all these springs they, they seem to be accumulators or, or something they uh, they go in those bores uh, but it's pretty straightforward now nothing crazy is just like I said I've never done this before so I was kind of nervous I was kind of nervous about the whole review but it's out all I have to do now is just put in the new harness and I'll be done and put it back in so to remove this how does this work does it just slide in there pops in there what is there a retainer that I need to deal with okay let's take a look at the new part and we'll be able to determine what we need to do Okay. Whew. All right. So it just looks like there's just a, a an O-ring and that's it. It looks like it just slides in there from what I can tell. So it may just need a little bit of persuasion. That's what got Mr. Rubber Mallet here. Let me see if I can get it from over here. Let me see. I'm just gonna kind of tap it. Oh. Uh, I don't see any. I don't see any. Any. Any retainers or anything. Looks like it's. Or could the retainer be on the outside? That's a possibility. Could the retainer be on the outside? Yeah, let me, let me look at that before I get too crazy with the hammer. Uh, no, I don't see anything. Again, you guys probably can't see this, and I apologize. Oh no, wait, I take that back. There is a retainer there. Oh, I take that back. Yeah, I was on the outside. Yes, sir, there is. Good thing I looked. Good thing that I looked. Because... If I didn't, that probably would have been a bad one. Let me see if I can get it with these uh, these hooks. Okay, so it looks like a big snap ring almost. Okay, I'll give you guys a good, a good view. It looks like this it goes on the top, on the outside of the transmission. So I'm gonna put this right here for now and I'm gonna I'm gonna push there we go see that's all it took yes it goes around this groove right here uh, just like this okay just like this and it slides right on in there so that's all it takes beautiful all right so the harness is out here we have the old one here we have the new one hopefully it should slide right on in there giggity giggity it's in there now we gotta put this 
clip back in there. And for that, I'm gonna need the help of the mirror. Oh, uh, you, you could you could do this up top. I mean, I'm just, you know, uh, I'm just being kind of funny about it. But technically, you could just slide that up top from the top. It's already in there. See, that's all it takes. It's no biggie. Um, I just don't feel like climbing on the ladder right now, or bring the car down for for just that okay so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna prep all these mating surfaces and clean the pan and all that i'm not gonna record all that um so as soon as i get that prepped and ready to go i'll, I'll get back with you on the camera thanks for hanging in there Alrighty, guys so we're back here and uh i went ahead and installed the the valve body and i connected it and i put the filter i didn't record none of that stuff because it was just too much going on and, and I didn't want to worry about you know the camera being there on my head bumping over everything so I, I do apologize but it was uh, it was a, a needed uh, sacrifice I must say um, one thing I did I do want to correct on what I said earlier is uh, these three here these three bolts here um, I said it was sh the from shortest to tallest one two three. I was incorrect on that It was actually the shortest the longest and the medium went here So just wanted to make sure that I clarified that shortest right here longest and The medium one the media si size was there all the other ones were sh regular short ones and they go in wherever and just make sure you tighten them don't ask me about the torque i don't know what it is my uh pro demand website this is not working today for some reason i can get into any other website but that one so i'm assuming they're having issues so i don't know what the torque is the torque is my wrist <laughs> that's all i can say just tighten them you know give it a good tightening don't overdo it to strip out anything and then follow a, a, a sequence so that you don't cock anything um, I, I'm probably gonna get a little bit of a backfire on that one there's a bunch of people that I live with the torque wrench on their hands dude come on let's be realistic um, the only thing you're gonna see me twerking is a, a head or 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 camshaft or uh, crankshaft or something like that. that that's just about the extent that you're gonna see a torque wrench in my hand and I know technicians that don't even do that I I wouldn't recommend it but they they, they don't even use torque wrench to do that they, they've done it so many times that they can just feel it and, and be okay with it uh, I know a buddy of mine personally that that's how he does it never had an issue uh, again I don't feel that comfortable but you know they do do it um anything else just just be reasonable it comes with experience you know you know how much torque you can give things and and so forth and so forth i did make sure that all those seals were in place when when i installed the uh the valve body it was two o-rings and like a little funny looking rubber seal um they looked like they were fine malleable but i personally if I would have known that that was there, I would have asked for those O-rings. And I did ask. In my defense, I did ask. Uh, the gentleman that was attending me, he said, oh, I don't see anything there. Um, and I, I took his word for it. I knew it was kind of weird, but I said, all right, whatever. Um, not mad at him or anything like that. It's just uh, the nature of the beast. It happens sometimes. Um, I just like to change any O-rings and, and things. Because if those things start leaking, guess what? now all this have to come has to come back apart so um if you're planning on doing this be prepared to get those o-rings and seals and all that just to be on the safe side all right so uh we're ready to put the pan not quite yet i gotta put i still gotta put the uh this part here that i haven't done yet and uh once i get that done then I'll be ready for the pan. So let me go ahead and give you guys. I hope uh, 
I'm sorry guys, because when you're working underneath a car with your head tilt up, you know, it's hard to see if you're getting a good angle or not. You need a flashlight for one hand and you need your other hand for something else, so, you know, I do apologize. I'm doing the best I can. If I put a tripod or something, then I got a tripod in the way. Um, yeah, maybe I'll consider getting one just for these situations. Uh, let me get this ratchet. Let me put the headlight on here. All right, so we're just gonna tighten this back up. It's tight, it's in there. I wish I can give it more of a solid tightening. Because that thing kind of gives. Let me see if I can just. Someone hold it. Okay. I'm sure that's not going anywhere. Okie dokie. All right, so now we got the, the shifter thingy in. We got our filter in. We cleaned up the, the pan and the mating surfaces. And I wanted to touch up on these things here real quick. A word on sealants and stuff okay if you have a gasket if you have a gasket oil pan valve cover whatever the situation is there is no need to put sealant on the pan put on the gasket then put sealant on top of the gasket and make a sandwich make a, a silicone sandwich there is no need for that you're adding unnecessary work for the next guy and or yourself if you're gonna have to tear this apart in the future if you have a gasket that should suffice there is no need to add globs of silicone to gaskets with the exception of where there is an imperfection a line or two surfaces meet you put a dab there so that when the gasket falls on top of it there is no gap and you don't have a leak that is the only exception to the rule I'm not a fan on putting silicone on gaskets. It's, it's, to me, it makes no sense. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be some of you guys that will beg to differ and I respect everybody, but that is my opinion. That's how I've always worked. I don't have issues. What I do use is something like this, a Permatex high tack And this, if you don't have it, I recommend you get it because this is going to be your third hand for mounting things that have gaskets so that the gaskets won't fall or flop everywhere this stuff is wonderful it's not a silicone or anything if you make a boo-boo you can easily wipe this off with some some sprays a uh, brake cleaner you know uh, whatever chemicals you want to use to wipe this off and it comes off relatively easy it does seal a little bit but it's really not a sealer per se it is simply a tacky add-on that you put on the surface to aid you in installing gaskets parts with gaskets so it won't fall off so if you have never worked with this before it's really tacky that's why it's called high tack see it says gasket sealant but it's it's more of a tacky thingy. i mean it does seal a little bit but you could easily wipe it down with something you spray some brake cleaner with a cloth and stuff you just easily wipe it down it, it's not that um it's not like a glue or anything like that it just as it dries it, make, it leaves a tacky surface so that the gasket sticks on it see and that's what this is for and that is it see 
see it doesn't fall off that's what that is for that is the the purpose see beautiful okay. you can move this around and the gasket will not fall off and you put it on the the part itself this you, it's easier to clean this off than it is being with your neck twisted up and and god knows what crap is in the way uh, on the block or whatever now if you don't have a gasket then yes you use your your gasket eliminator rtv whatever fancy schmancy stuff you want to use uh, but if you have a gasket please don't put globs of assuming you don't have the high tech and you do have some rtv okay put a couple dabs here 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 and then just put your gasket and that's it just a few tabs so so the thing won't fall off if that's what you're using it for that's fine but don't coat the par throw the gasket then coat the gasket with no please don't do that okay i'm not gonna beat that horse anymore but it annoys me when i see that because then i have to fight cleaning the surfaces needlessly it's very very annoying so i apologize if if you custom to doing that i mean that's that's your call i don't want to offend anybody but come on dude please all right so now let me double check okay i got the part tight everything has been tightened i got my gasket in place and we install okay now the holes in this gasket are a little small and the reason for that is that you can just stick them through there see just like that and the bolts will hold the gasket for you okay so if the holes are a little smaller on the gasket don't worry it's cool it's no big deal uh, okay all right guys so i'm probably gonna cut most of this <laughs> Cause you don't want to see me here playing around with all these screws for about 20 minutes. Uh, I already talked about the gasket ordeal, so. You always want to hand start these. You want to hand start. You don't want to strip anything. Stripping threads is never a good thing. I should put an extension on this. Uh... Okay, I'm going to use my drill. But I'm going to do it in the lowest setting, which is just the drive setting. And I'm just going to easily, you know, because... I'm experienced at this. I feel comfortable doing it, but you don't want to right off the bat because you will cross thread something. Then you, sir or ma'am, are fixing to have a bad day. A bad day indeed. So, as you can see, I think these, I think these screws are kind of different on some of them. Yeah, somebody, oh, this is a given. Somebody's been here before. So I can't help what somebody did before me. But either way, it's not a big deal. See, I'm just easily driving it in and I have the setting and the lowest, which is just re technically just driving in the driving in the uh, the screw there's no real torque behind it and I started off really easy nice everything is going in nicely 
real smooth. Okay. And now we're gonna I'm using a bit of a torque sequence. I'm just gonna driving it, drive them in all the way. Using a crisscross pattern. So now I just hand torque them. I hand torque them and call it a day. I just hand torque them. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, I apologize. The camera unexpectedly turned off on me. I guess I ran out of battery, so um, you guys missed the rest of the uh, reinstallation. Uh, but no big deal. It wasn't much. Um, I went ahead and topped it off, put it at uh, operating temperature, checked the transmission level. Everything is great. I cleared the code. Um, the transmission now is shifting perfectly. Um, I don't know if it's too dark in here. Let me turn on a light or something. There we go. Another one. There we go. Um, now it's shifting a lot smoother. Doesn't do that crazy jumping that it was, and it shifts a lot smoother. Now, initially it was still kind of acting kind of crazy. So what I had to do was I had to reset under special functions I am using an all tail scan tool so under special functions it says to reset auto trans adaptive values I did have to do that once I did that problem solved the transmission started shifting normal and as you can see there is no more trouble codes and our oil temperature sensor is working number six we're at 150 now 150 um, so now we are everything is working as it should be I'm gonna go for a quick drive here All right, we're gonna, it was kind of a little incline there I'm gonna put it back at park okay we're gonna put it in drive and we're driving Transmission is shifting as it should. So, as you can see there, everything is beautiful. That light did come on. I don't know why it does that, but that's not the issue. Why it was here, so. Salt. We are a-okay. Let's bust a U-turn. Okay. I wonder why that skid light turned on. But the transmission is a hundred percent as of right now so thank you guys for watching i hope this was helpful to a certain degree i do apologize for the camera angles and the craziness with the camera um, when you're under a car it's kind of difficult to make sure you have a, a good uh, angle when you're especially when you're by yourself um but 
I hope uh, I covered some things that help somebody out there that's having this situation. Um, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all the support you give to the channel. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Ciao.